Hello everyone, Richard Lewis here again. Uh, good to see you all. Uh, I've just got back from DreamHack Tour. Uh, so you'll have to excuse the voice. It's a little bit croaky, as you can probably tell. I'm a little bit run down. It was a very uh, long three, four days for me. Uh, doing both the StarCraft and the CSGO. Uh, in the last video, the sound was a little bit quiet on and the audio levels were a bit dropped. And I think that was mainly down to the fact I wasn't really projecting. I was trying to save my voice because my voice often blows out. Uh, quite often um, So hopefully you can hear me all right. Anyway, this video will be a little bit all over the place anyway It's more of a pontification on a, on a few issues, which is um, First the first, first and foremost just about booing booing Which has cropped up, you know, I saw several threads about how wrong it was for fans to be booing rival players and uh, this happened in both the Starcraft and the CSGO actually uh, so some players, some players got booed uh, during the stage show. Um, you know, not not loudly in the StarCraft, but obviously the main guy that was on the receiving end for CS:GO was Flusher. Now, before we get into that, I just want to say that that crowd out at DreamHack Tour was amazing. I've been going to French events for a long time, and I haven't always had the best time at French events, frankly. And in, in, in fact, you know, Land Seventy Nine and ESWC. I would put right up there among the worst events uh, that, I've, that I've attended in my long history of attending them. But the one thing that is always amazing at French events is the crowd. I can't think of one event I've attended, good or bad, where the crowd has me massively into what they are seeing. And especially if it's like a French player that's playing. Uh, you know, I said on stream at the time that it was like the closest thing I'd seen to a sports crowd in a long time in esports you have to go back quite some way events are becoming really sanitized games developers don't really know what to do about this whole sort of idea of competition uh, a lot of them get a bit squeamish about it so uh, partisanship is is being discouraged the notion that's being put forward is that if you're a fan you're yeah you can be a fan of an organization a fan of a player a fan of a team but you should be, first and foremost, a fan of the game. And therefore, there's this idea that you should applaud everybody equally. And booing or showing any form of displeasure whatsoever has no place at a sports event. Now, that's bullshit, right? I mean, I'm a long-standing sports fan. I've been a sports reporter. And it to me, that sentiment just has echoes of the school sports day. You know what I mean? When they, they make you all go out and do athletics and they tell you, oh, it's the taking part that counts. Everyone's a winner. Everyone gets a medal. Yay! Like, aren't we fucking special? We're all, we're all winners today. And, you know, fuck that attitude, right? Like, real sport should never be about that, ever. It should be about the appreciation of excellence and equally highlighting when people fail to live up to a even a basic standard. There's nothing wrong with that. If someone is bad, you know, it's okay to point it out. So I'll tell you uh, about the crowd in tour as well. You know, um, there were little pockets of, of um, supporters, like you would get at a real sports event. And down, imagine this was the balcony where we were in the analysis desk. Down over there, there were pockets of fanatic fans. And I'll give you an example of one of the little funny things. If you've ever been to a football game or a rugby game or anything like that, or an NFL game, uh, you, you'll you'll understand stuff like this happens. So there were a bunch of French fans over here, and they were like batting a balloon around, and it battered, and it like wafted over to the Fnatic fans. And obviously at this point, the Fnatic team had been booed on stage. Flusher had been booed. So one Fnatic fan just stood up and just ripped the balloon and just burst it in front of them all. And then they started booing over them while the Fnatic fans were like laughing at them. Now this wasn't like mean spirited at all. This was actually all part of the show. This was fun. They're the kind of amusing little things that happen uh, during football games that I've attended. You know, if you can uh, see the opposite fans, you know, you have banter back and forth. You know, yeah, sometimes it spills over into violence. I don't think esports is there yet. I don't think we've got anything to worry about on that front. But for the most part, you just sing songs at each other and one song will come at you and then someone will come up with a witty refrain and we'll chant it back. And, you know, scarves and banners, flares, I guess. You know, whatever. And that's... That, that, that's normal, right? Like, nobody thinks that's a terrible thing. That's just 
what happens when you go to a game there's a tribalistic mentality that kicks in and again obviously people can take it too far i'm not advocating hooliganism but supporting your team is hugely important so I hate the argument that we should be different to sports. I see a lot of whiny bitches make the post like, esports is something different to sports. Uh, we don't need to be like them. We should create a higher standard. There's no change in human nature fundamentally. And uh, the idea that what we should do is distance ourselves further from sports when everyone has been building this industry, that you know these people have probably spent like six months in total, the idea that we should be like, oh, distancing ourselves from sports and doing things differently is it's absurd, really. Uh, it, there's no logic to it. Um, there, there's definitely some things perhaps we shouldn't copy. But I think we're already different enough in so many ways from sports that the one thing we should probably be looking to emulate is how supporters interact with their teams. And in fact, if more of us did this, I think esports would be in a much better place. So what do I mean by that? Well, I believe a true supporter financially backs their team by buying merchandise and sponsor products. That's something that happens in real sports. I don't think we do that enough or even sometimes have the opportunity to do it enough in, uh, you know, in, 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 in esports. Uh, I believe a true supporter turns up to watch games, meets the players, hangs around for autographs again, just like real sports. I believe a true supporter gets upset when the team loses and gets frustrated when someone underperforms or if the team makes a dodgy signing. That's just like real sports. And most of all, for however long a game lasts, you should cheer for your team and do all you can to give them an edge and all you can do to make the opponents feel uneasy. This is why the home advantage exists. It, it is the extra, the extra man, so to speak. Now, sports rivalries as well often define the identity of the club. So what is uh, Arsenal without Tottenham? Uh, what are the Raiders without the 49ers? What are the Knicks without the Nets? You know, those, ge those, uh, those games, like they mean the most to fans because they're not just about who wins and who loses. They're about something deeper, you know, like identity, geography, history, culture. You know, whatever it is, it matters and it makes people care passionately about the sport for those reasons. Now, again... That's the kind of thing I want to see more of in esports, personally. I want it to matter. I don't like the TSM-CLG rivalry being this sort of plastic, artificially created and artificially hyped rivalry that it is. You know, I want TSM and CLG fans to really go at it on Derby Day. You know, I want it to matter. I want it to be, you know, life and death for, you know, for the 80 minutes or whatever that it lasts. That's how it is. You know, you should, if you're a TSM fan, that, that should say something about you and the choices that you've made. There should be, there should be something about TSM that you identify with. And the same if you're a CLG fan, there should be something you identify with about CLG that makes you distinct from a TSM fan. And you should be able to talk about those differences quite openly. And those differences, you know, should be, should be part of that rivalry. And if those rivalries are genuine, when they're genuine, which I think the TSM-CLG rivalry has actually started moving away from that and it has become almost like a marketing tool in a lot of ways. I think uh, when, when they are genuine, it really enhances the sport. It really gives you those moments, those passionate moments that really matter. Booing anyway is like hardwired into us because it's been around for so long. So there's, the first inc like incidents of berating public performers... And that goes back to like ancient Greek times. Certainly, we'd all be familiar. We've all seen Gladiator. We all know that for, for all its historical inaccuracies, the one thing it probably gets right is this idea of crowd participation in whether, you know, often whether people lived or died, actually, uh, you know, towards the end of the Roman Empire. So the, the, the idea of booing somebody, it's, it's been around for ages. It's normal. It, it's it's a normal cultural response now. I don't even know if you can get a, get away with it. I don't even know if you could remove it. Uh, there's been lots of debates recently uh, about you know oh is it right to boo athletes? You know you can find these articles on um, I, I'd say you know predominantly uh, liberal uh, publications. But the consensus generally always ends up the same way, and that is that if a spectator turns up, pays their money for a ticket. Uh, they get to express their opinion. And that opinion can be just to cheer, to do nothing, just to watch, to berate opponents or their own team. You know, that's part of the interactivity of, of sports crowds. And 
I've always said if I was a team, I'd be worried uh, if the boo if the booing stops because it probably means you're not successful, and it probably means your own fans have given up. That you know they don't care anymore. Uh, they're apathetic. So it's never nice to be on the receiving end. You know, I know a thing or two about being hated. It's tough. It really is tough. All right. And uh, yeah, I've I, I've I've had it before. I, I I've been booed when doing a gig. You know, not like what Flush had got on the weekend, but I've had people give me a hard time. And that's that's fine, you know. Um, and I, I think you've just got to take it on. You know, you just got to endure it. You, you know, that's just it, again. It just for me, it comes with a territory. And that was what was great about Flush's smile when the volume on the booing was ramped up just for him. You can't let it get to you, you know. And he was saying, "Look, this isn't going to fucking bother me." We'll see. He was laughing at the end. All right. He's probably the most hated player in in CS:GO in the whole of CS:GO. And, you know, maybe that's deserved, right? But you can't deny his character or how broad his shoulders are. You can't deny the part he's played in helping Fnatic become the best team in the world either. So do you think he needs you guys to protect him, to, to, to shield him from the booze? He doesn't. He's more than capable of looking out for himself. And there's plenty of people who will cheer for him and cheer for Fnatic. But when you go and play against the, the, the top French team in france to a mainly french crowd guess what's gonna happen now people say oh you can't judge a community based on opinions because communities are too diverse um but what we can agree on is that you know you can see a majority consensus form and the one thing i would argue that reddit is good for and it's not good for much is that it lets you establish what the consensus is very quickly um, you know, any dissenting voices get quickly <laughs> downvoted, suppressed, and we, we establish what the status quo is. So this is a community that felt comfortable going after Flusher as a cheat, based on the footage we've all seen, and God knows how many threads there's been about that. This was a community that felt it was acceptable to go crazy over Boostgate, talk about how Fnatic were uh, just a team of cheats, and that there was nothing to like about them. Uh, this was a community that rallied round, actually, and organised uh, block emails to Fnatic sponsors, which, by the way, affect the whole organisation and not just the CSGO team. And apparently that was okay. But now the group consensus is what? Like, it's just swung the other way and it's our booing people's too far, you know? Taking away someone's livelihood, that's all right. You know? Smearing someone's character, that's all right. But booing them in person, holy shit, that's disgusting it makes us look unsophisticated it makes us look childish we we've really got to stamp this out and this is why people think social media is just a series of so uh, series of circle jerks because the consensus like can fluctuate to being completely contradictory depending on who it's about so for example would anyone complain if uh, thorin turned up to an event for example and people started booing him i'm pretty sure the top thread would be great to see the community express that, oh, we're not going to tolerate guys like Thorin anymore. Pretty sure that would be the consensus, right? So it's massively hypocritical, isn't it? So I guess we're coming to the second half of the video, and um, the, 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 this it's tenuously linked, and I did say it was going to be a bit all over the place. But, um, you know, this idea that booing's bad, but uh, following my colleague Thorin, uh, his comments about Hellraisers, and he had an interaction with several pro players who actually initiated it, who were berating him for expressing his opinions on his own Twitter. And I noticed there was this new uh, craze of taking like Hello Thorin photos with people like flipping the bird with him, and it was the pro players that initiated it. Now I don't have a problem with that like at all. I think that's pretty fucking funny. And in fact, when I'm at Gfinity this weekend, I'm going to flip Duncan a bird on air just to milk it for a cheap laugh. But why are the same people? who are wanting to protect a player from being booed uh, from a crowd, why are they okay with having players try and leverage their fan base to abuse someone who has worked promoting Counter-Strike for longer than pretty much these guys, have been, or most of those guys have been playing it? Now, I'm hoping you can see how this is a contradictory standpoint. Uh, and it does strike me as very weird that so many people all of a sudden have got this massive, like, hate hard-on uh, for Thorin, despite the fact that I think one of the shining lights about the CSGO scene, obviously we'll talk about it uh, a, little, a little bit more before the video ends, is that 
were actually a bit more, you know, robust. Our our analysis desks can have crazy things happen on them. They can have big opinions. They can have arguments. Uh, I think the CS a CSGO desk, especially one with Thorin on it, is closer to anything you will see, you know, closer to anything you'd see on, like, American sports broadcasting. You know, I've seen pundits have full arguments. I've seen pundits walk off. I've seen them do crazy little stunts where it's like, oh, hey, can you throw a American football from here at the other end of the studio just to prove you still got it? And they, they do crazy shit all the time. And other esports are like, oh, that's a bit edgy. That's a bit edgy. Like, no one's worried about that. But we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. You know, I, I did see this Imja link that was going around uh, that showed the differences between, like, the LCS desk, uh, Dota desk, and the CSGO desk. And it was a photo of Duncan, what he did at the end, smashing the baguette. And that was to try and say we're failing as a product. So, you know, I don't see that at all. And all you need to do is you just got to apply context to it. So, it, DreamHack is fucking DreamHack, all right? DreamHack is meant to be a bit edgier than the average tournament. Um, if it was the CSGO equivalent of the international, I doubt we'd be behaving in the same way. When Scoots and, and Duncan and myself, we do a Gfinity, our brief's quite clear. We've been told, you make the analysis like Top Gear for Counter-Strike. And I personally think it's great that we've got the license to do that. And I think it would be a far worse place if we were operating under like Riot-style laws in the CSGO community where all fun has to be approved by some arbitrary body and going off message... Uh, is going to get you fired and pushed out of the community. I don't like that at all. So, I think it's hugely important that we almost like celebrate the the, the diversity and, and and not try and stamp people out for maybe being a bit, you know, edgy, a bit, you know, have, have expressing opinions that other people don't want. What people often forget is that Duncan's been around doing this a long time, and actually. Uh, when he's been used as an anal uh, an analyst before, way way before, before CS:GO even, all he would do is just regurgitate like these are the facts, this is what happened, these are the meetings, these are the statistics, these are what I think they mean, and people hated it. They were like, oh, you know, all Duncan ever does is talk. All he does is talk about numbers, and it's boring. And you know, we want to hear more from Joe Miller and. You know, imagine that, right? Like, you know, so he's he's evolved into a, more of an entertainer down the years, and he's getting berated for that. You know, that's what I mean. People have short memories. Well, it's not even that, actually. <laughs> to say that people have short memories is uh, probably being a bit disingenuous because the people who are all saying this shit, from what I can tell, uh, are the people who've come into CSGO uh, and they just want to impose these standards, and they all say the same thing. It's, hey, I've only just started following Counter-Strike, but what I think is... Now, to quote Freddy Krueger from A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors, I don't give a fuck what you think. Literally, you just got here. Some of us have put a decade plus into getting this to where it is now. When I was beta testing CSGO servers for Valve before the fucking game was even out there, you know, like, I wasn't, you know, like... Uh, the, the last thing I wanted would be some guy four years from, from that point turning up and going, yeah, well, you know, you, what have you done? And just like, what the fuck are you like? Yeah, yeah, we get it. We get it. It's great to have the numbers we've got now. But an idea might be like, how about you just sit down and shut the fuck up for a minute and just uh, try and absorb what the scene is actually like? You, you know, I can think of no other industry or... You know, no other sport or nothing where the, the new guys, the new generation just get to come in and impose their standards because they don't like every facet of something they don't even fully understand yet. You know, half of these people have come from other games and it's like, okay, don't bring your cultural norms into our fucking sport. You know, like, it, I'll tell you what the norms are, or were, and I hope they stay this way. Pre-game trash talk... Uh, was, wasn't was just okay. It was fucking mandatory. You know, big opinions were all part of the fun. They weren't a cause for tears or crying or complaining. Players would openly berate players while playing, you know, so they could hear it. You, They would stand up every time they got a kill, sit the fuck down. 
and they would do that to gain a psychological edge. It would, you know, like sledging in cricket. And fans used to mock their rivals when their team prevailed quite openly. And you know what else? At the end of all of that shit, which probably sounds really hostile, everyone would shake hands, we'd all go have a beer, and we'd all get drunk together. And you know why? Because that's how sport conducted by grown-ups should be. So, it's an appeal, I guess, all of this. Let's not try and turn CSGO into every other esports product. Counter-Strike's never been about that. It's always been something a bit different, something a bit edgier. Think about the content of the game. This ain't for kids. It's not meant to be for kids. All right? This is about terrorists trying to blow shit up and counter-terrorists trying to stop them by killing them. That's the game. It was never meant to be, you know, for the little ones. And it's a game of huge skill. And it's a stressful game. And it's it's one of those it's it's one of those games that really deserved way more attention than it got. And I'm glad it's getting the attention it is now. But just because it's getting all that attention, let's not make it like everything else because we equate that success to, oh well, if we do this, we'll have even more success. No, we'll be we're successful in our own right. We don't need to bow down to these, you know, sensors and these fucking Mary Whitehouse types that want to sanitize and clean up our game. There's no need to do it. We need to be adult. We need to be robust, and we need to watch CS go grow, and and be what it is. Simple as that. So if you're one of the guys out there that thinks it's wrong to boo an opponent player or even your own team, then I don't know what to tell you. You know, you need to maybe take a step back, look at the real world, stop hiding behind the argument that, hey, I don't want to be like the NFL, I don't want to be like football. Just fucking relax. The majority of us can cope with it. We don't need this vocal fucking minority, you know, trying to sanitize our game. It's it. This is real. This is sports. This is how it works. And equally, if if you are against it, be against it all the time. Yeah, don't just be like, oh, well, actually, I'm for booing a player, um, but, sorry, I'm not for booing a player, but it's okay to hound Thorin out of the business, or it's okay to, you know, drive somebody that I don't like out of the business, because you've been a massive fucking hypocrite, and it's ridiculous. So, take home from this, what the French crowd were doing in tour was absolutely right and on the money, and it created, contributed to an amazing atmosphere. There were Fnatic fans present in that audience, and they were just as into the game as the French fans were, even though they were the minority. There were no incidents of fights, violence, or anything remotely hostile between the two rival fans. And most importantly of all, that despite the booing, when Fnatic won, even the French fans applauded them. That's the reality. Don't rewrite history. We don't need to change anything. Thanks for watching.